Hey everybody, Kevin from 9mm here with Battlefield 6. Today we're going to talk about how to treat a tension pneumothorac using a needle decompression. So let's first talk about what exactly is a tension pneumothorac. And so what has happened is that uh, some type of trauma, whether it's blunt force or, or uh, a sharp trauma, has, uh, has caused a rupture in the lining of your of your lungs. And so what that does is that forces oxygen out. Every time you take a breath in, that forces air into the pleural cavity of your uh, of your upper torso. And so what's this doing then is that it's filling your, your chest essentially with oxygen, and creating a big bubble in there that's pressing against your, uh, against your lungs and making it hard for you to breathe on that one side. And it's essentially collapsing that lung down um, and, uh, and making it difficult for you to breathe. So what causes this, like I said, is it's typically like a sharp or blunt force trauma. So gunshots to the chest, uh, car accidents, you'll see them uh, where people took a, uh, uh, like an airbag to the chest. You'll actually see it done periodically where, by people doing CPR. CPR performance can actually cause that. Uh, same thing with broken ribs. Uh, so it's not quite as uh, unreal as you might think it, it, think it be, uh, the possibility are coming across it, uh, just because it is fairly common in things like car accidents. So the way that we're going to treat this is we're actually going to take a, uh, a needle and we're going to rupture that, uh, that, that little air bubble that's being created and we're going to poke a needle into that and allow that oxygen to escape um, until we can get this person to a surgeon, a doctor, a hospital, wherever, uh, and they can actually get the help that they need. And so, the, uh, so now that you can understand a little bit about kind of what it is and what we're attempting to do, uh, first thing that we need and really the major thing that we need is we need a needle designed to do this. Now they make different kits designed for doing this. Uh, this is a little bit more uh, kind of old-fashioned one that the, uh, that the Army used to issue. Uh, but they have, they have kits now that you can buy, uh, not really expensive, throw them in your medical kit and actually uh, comes in a hard plastic container so you don't damage this needle uh, from kind of you know, rolling around, keeping it in your combat gear, whatever it is. Um, so anyways, it's, uh, it's typically going to be a 14 gauge needle, although you will see them as 16 gauge needles um, for, um, for, for children, adolescents. Uh, they typically re recommend an 18 gauge needle, uh, though I don't know anybody that actually carries an 18 gauge needle in their med kits. Everybody just carries 14 gauges um, and uh, figures that'll, be, that'll work for the kids. So the, uh, what we're, what we're going to do is we need to make sure that we get this needle in the right place. And so the right place is in the second intercostal space between the second and third rib um, coming down from the collarbone. So, it's a little bit harder to find, especially if that person is a bigger person, whether it's fat or muscle on that person's chest, uh, it can be very difficult to find that rib. So you really sometimes got to press in there, and if they're conscious, they're going to be fighting you on it and not allow you to, not allow you to, uh, to try and find that, because it will hurt them to actually just dig your fingers in there and start pressing down pretty hard to try and find that rib and trying to get through some of that pectoral muscle there to find those, to find those two ribs. Uh, now, the, it's important to note that the first rib is actually hidden behind your, your clavicle bone here. Um, and so you're not actually going to typically feel that first bone. You can kind of feel it underneath and press real hard. Uh, but that's, that's actually your first rib. So the second rib is actually going to be probably the first one that you feel coming down. And then down below that is the third rib. And what we're going to do is we're going to come right above the third rib to get into that second intercostal space. The reason we're coming above the third rib as opposed to below the second rib is because underneath those ribs is essentially a line of nerves, veins, and blood vessels. And, uh, and so we want, to, uh, we want to stay away from that so we don't puncture that. And um, I believe there's an artery that actually runs underneath some of them, but I'm not sure if it runs underneath all of them. Uh, but anyways, there's, there's, there's a lot of damage that we can do if we come underneath that second rib. And so what we're going to do is we're going to come over the top of the third rib, and we're going to put the, uh, put the needle in there. Now, we used to teach left to right. We used to tell people to get in line with the, uh, with the nipple, and that was the best way to do it. That typically works for average-sized people. People that are a little bit bigger or smaller than average, sometimes their nipple is a little bit off-center. So especially very, very large people, because of that, that added fat in, their, in, their, in uh, their, their chest, it actually will push their nipple out to the side a little bit and push it out towards the left or the right side, depending on which side it's on. And uh, that's almost okay because it's a little bit better to push out this way than it is to push in this way. If, 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 we're, if we get too far into the center, then uh, there's a lot of damage that we can cause there. But typically what we're going to find, if we're going to find uh, where that is, that, is that nice little little bump in your clavicle. And we're going to come straight down from there. Uh, and that'll be, if you can see on mine, it's right in line with my, with my nipple. And so that actually comes down perfect on there. Uh, so that, and that's typically how we're going to find it. Now, we can come and get the, uh, 
get this in from the side over here, but we're, we're not going to cover that in today's video. We're just going to come and uh, we're going to talk about how to get it, how to get the uh, the needle decompression in here. And so, what this needle will look like is uh, it's just a regular needle with a catheter around it. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this, and once we hear that air hiss, because um, that that's remember you're popping a balloon that's just inside their cavity. That air is going to hiss out of there. You're going to get some blood squirting out of there. Um, once that happens, you're going to insert that catheter in there. Now, it's important to note that you use a needle that's, u that's actually designed to be used for needle decompression as opposed to a regular needle because the catheter in there is actually designed to withstand that pressure around it and it won't, uh, it won't kink or collapse, or it's not supposed to kink or collapse on there. So those are the important things to realize. Um, now, we can get away with using a different needle if that's all we have, but that's not ideal. So this is what we want to carry on our med kit and make sure we have a, uh, a needle to, uh, to do a needle decompression on there. Now, it gets a little bit more specific when we talk about how to bandage this up, and that's kind of more for a different video, because that we'll get into a little bit more time constraints on how to bandage chest wounds and stuff like that. Um, but we need to start looking at things like doing a one-way valve on here. So the best way that we can do a one-way valve on here, uh, if we're so lucky to do that in different schools, teach different methods. I think right now it's accepted to not even do a uh, one-way valve on it. Uh, but if, you, if they go back and they decide they want to do one-way valves, one of the easiest ways to do that is to take a pair of rubber surgical gloves, simply cut the finger off of that and then you slide the needle through that finger as you enter it in and that way what that'll do is as uh, there's no air or anything that can get in there because that, that finger will kind of close off around the end of this and the end of the catheter and uh, basically it, it'll allow the air to spell out and then it'll kind of collapse so if that kind of makes sense that's that's what we're looking to do there so like I said it kind of depends on what school I think right now it's accepted that you don't have to worry about a one-way valve but I'm sure in the next five years we'll go back to saying you need a one-way valve. So uh, just important to know how to do it. Um, but anyways, like I said, we'll get into kind of bandages up, bandaging this up in a different video when we talk about how to bandage chest wounds. Uh, but that's just a real quick down and dirty. Remember guys, you really need to go out and get training on this. Uh, watching YouTube videos just does not count as training. This should really serve no more as just a refresher or kind of a quick rundown so you can kind of see what you're getting into when you actually go take a class and how to do this. Uh, Remember guys to uh, like us on Facebook if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel and stay alert, stay live, and thanks for watching.